Did you ever get a bunch of false promises, a bunch of things that the other person said that they were going to do, said they were going to show up, but it never happened? Did you see that a lot? You might have been dealing with someone who was future faking or was figuring out a different way to be able to manipulate you. We're going to dive into that today. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. I meet with people every single day to help them break their trauma bond, get clarity, try to have understanding and closure after coming out of or still in a toxic or narcissistic relationship to help them get free. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations, the creator of the NARC app, and your guide in the 45-day Clarity Challenge that you can access at claritychallenge.net. If you like what you see here, please subscribe. We're talking about narcissism, narcissistic abuse, how to be able to grow from it, my journey in narcissism, a lot of different things like that. Hit subscribe, hit the notification so you can get notified when we drop a new video and also when we go live on the platforms for question and answers, multiple things like that. When we're talking today about future faking, understanding it, what is it? What does it look like? How does it actually portray in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, and we're talking about this future faking and this idea of like empty promises, holding on to a dream. I want to walk you through four steps. First one is we're going to define it. Then we're going to talk about how it works. And then we're going to talk about how to recognize it and then also how to protect yourself. Okay. So future faking, what is it? It's a manipulation tactic to be able to control and deceive. It's the idea of bringing in false promises or giving an illusion. When you think about an illusion, it's the idea of like projecting something up there of like, I want to be able to give you an illusion of this actually happening when that's false. Oftentimes, I'm also giving you illusion that like while it's there, I'm actually hiding something at the same time. But an idea of like false promises and illusion, you see this a lot of times in three different ways. You see it at the very beginning of the relationship, and this is used to gain trust. This is a way to be able to see, hey, I can actually get with you. We can be together. We can develop this emotional investment really, really fast. It makes it harder for you to leave. It makes you start to wonder like, wait a second, I found my person. Like this is the best thing ever. And you get locked in at the very beginning. It's like future faking. Love bombing, yes, is there. But then future faking is like, let's start talking about our future. Let's start getting to the place where we're like locked in for life because we have the rest of our life planned out in the first two weeks of getting, getting together. Okay. Then you also have it like during the relationship and during the relationship, it's more along the lines of trying to avoid accountability in the moment. Love bombing sometimes does that with sh shifting perspective, but with future faking, it's like, well, yeah, but like, I'm going to plan this trip or like, Hey, this is actually happening. Or like I'm promising change, but in that moment, nothing is actually changing. We don't actually see the change get exemplified or actually done in the relationship. But that future faking piece is like, let's focus on something else. Let's focus on something else that's not me in the moment or is not what I've done. So sometimes we'll see that future faking happen in the relationship to convince you about that stuff that's going on. It gives you hope, distracts you from that immediate accountability. We'll also see it at the end or even after the relationship as another way to manipulate and to try to control back into your life. Now with this, sometimes it'll look like they're trying to hoover you back. They're trying to get back into your life. They're trying to suck you back into that toxicity. And it will be coming out saying like, hey, I've changed. Like, this is all different. Like, I'm going to get better. Like, this is something. I'm a new person. Like, I, I, I quit these addictions. I quit this. I, I'm going to. And it's all this aspect of like this future stuff. And so a lot of times when I talk to clients or when I'm sitting down working with someone one-on-one, -on -one, I'll be asking something about how they demonstrate and they're like, well, they're, they're going to go to therapy or they, they said they're looking or they said this. And I'm like, wait, 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 we can only go off of like the actions and the demonstration, like the facts of what's actually happened. Like we can't say like, hey, this is going to happen because that's the narcissist talking through you saying like, oh, I'm going to do this when there's no action. There's nothing there. Okay. So oftentimes we'll see future faking at the beginning, during, and at the end or after the relationship. So with how it works, I want to be able to try to paint a picture of like, let's say like a magician and a magician gives you an illusion. Uh, oftentimes it gives you an illusion that there's something there that's not there. Like there's something in their hand when there's actually nothing in their hand. Like there's something that you just saw disappear and you're well like, whoa, like I thought that was there. 
Now, the other thing when we're talking about like magicians and like things like that with giving an illusion, there's also the idea of distracting you from what's someplace else. Now, a lot of times you see this with like sleight of hand. They'll be doing one thing over here and they'll be prepping something else over here. They'll be doing one thing over here and you won't see their hand move in a different way. So be like, oh, look over here and there's something else going on over here. That's the idea of like the illusion of future faking is it's giving you an idea of like pretend that something's there or let me pretend that something's there to distract you from what's over here. Okay, oftentimes it comes down in a couple different ways. The first one that I have is future goals and plans. So like we're going to have a great house together. Like that house of your dreams that you wanted, like I'm gonna get that for you. Like like I believe in you, like this is going to happen. We're gonna do this. I want all the kids that you want. Like I wanna get married. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna build this, this mansion. I wanna have this money. I want us to travel and all these things. And sometimes it's the idea of like all these things here, but they don't have the, the capabilities and you don't see them actually making the plans to get there. But the goals and the plans are there of like, oh, we're gonna do all this stuff, okay? But a lot of times it never comes to fruition. Like it never actually transpires because of the fact that they're not even tied to it. They're not even trying to do it. It's just that thought of like, oh, okay, if I do this, then I won't have to be accountable for this. If I do this, then it's going to lock them in and I can kind of pull back from it. Sometimes you'll see it in the future phrases. Like just simple as like, I can't imagine my life without you. Like, this is the best thing ever. Like, I cannot wait to spend the rest of my life. Like, I don't see a future without you. Like, like you are my future. And like, tie, trying to tie a bunch of stuff in, like long-term, you know, especially when you're like very early on in the relationship, like you just met and you're like, oh, we're so, so much alike. Like, like we are gonna be together forever. Like, like there's so many things, okay? Future goals, future phrases, future lies. Okay, with this one, it's like the idea of the intention so like, I'm gonna show you, this is what I want with no capability and no implementation of actually doing it. And, and with this, the idea is like, they're trying to portray an intention, but that intention actually isn't there. The majority of time it's like, nope, this is just what I wanna do. This is just where I wanna go to avoid that accountability. When you're in the relationship, a lot of it is just an avoidance. Like, we're gonna do this. Then sometimes they'll switch it and they'll hold it over you. Well, we were going to do this, but you talked bad to me, so I'm canceling our vacation. Like, there's so many different things that go there. Okay, future goals, future phrases, future lives. A lot of times that's how it works. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, leave a question down below. I can answer that. We can talk one-on-one -on -one either way, okay? So uh, what it is, how it works, and then recognizing it, okay? Recognize when you start to see people that say they have a plan, but no change, and you'll see this a lot of times with narcissists where they'll say like, hey, I'm going to get better. Like, I I'm going to go to therapy. And you're like, well, you've been saying that for like two, two years and you've never gone to therapy. Well, I'm going to get better. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop yelling at you. But then you're like, but it hasn't happened. This is where you have to understand those actions have to be there. Like you have to be able to see progress. And this whole aspect of like, well, you should just trust my actions. You should just trust me that I'm changing. No, that's a bunch of BS. Okay, because when a person has lost trust, the last thing they should be doing is tell everybody else to trust them that they're changing. Like if you get anything from this video, like take this one concept, the one idea here, and that if a person is actually changing, they don't have you hold on to blind trust that you need to keep following them with no change being exemplified. So like you need to understand if a narcissist, if the person in your life is saying, I'm changing, but you're expected to go through it with blind trust, they're not changing. It's just a future fake. It's just something to distort your reality to keep you hooked even longer. You need to run, you need to get out, okay? So recognize it. Partner talks about making plans, okay? And then they don't follow through. They talk about showing up for the kids and then they don't follow through. Like this idea of like, you have to trust them, but you can't question them. They're changing, but you can't hold them accountable. Like there's all this like, push and pull, okay? Maybe you've got a friend that like wants to do stuff together and then they always cancel at the last minute. Like they don't follow through with the plans. And I'm not talking about something came up, but you're noticing like, wait a second, this is habitual. Like this isn't just a one-off thing. This is happening consistently. Maybe you have a boss that's always talking to you about these future promotions or these future ideas and it never happens. Oftentimes it's leading you to work even harder and to just be able to use and abuse you in one sense to get you to the place of like, oh, I got more out of you because you're working harder for something that I was never gonna give you to start off with. It's leading you on with giving you pieces of hope. 
Okay, maybe the same aspect, sometimes you see it with families of where they'll promise stuff or where they'll try to, you know, oh, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, and then there's no follow through. All those can be different aspects of future faking to start recognizing like what is actually happening and how are you actually seeing it. All right, so last off, how do we actually protect ourselves from this? What do you actually do? Now, the first thing is like you need to establish boundaries. We talk about boundaries so much because it's so important. Boundaries are for you, not for the other person. And that boundary has to be something that you look and you evaluate and you see, and you're like, wait a second, I'm surrounding myself with people that never follow through with their promises. Like there's people in my life that aren't following through with the things that they said they were going to follow through, which means that person is inconsistent either with their character or with their loyalty or their honesty. Something's wrong here. I need to be able to adjust. And oftentimes those boundaries aren't saying like, oh, I'm limiting you. It's just like, no, this isn't who I want to live as. This isn't the person that I want to have in my life because of my values, because of I want. Okay. Be realistic. Listen to your gut be able to look at the perspective of like what is actually happening. And the third thing is like get into community. Community is super important because a lot of times people around you will see stuff that you don't see. The hard part is when you're in love with a toxic person, you begin to get to a place where you don't trust anybody else. You only trust that person's opinion. And as a result, sometimes you walk blindly into things because the people around you are like, hey, something's wrong. But you're like, no, it's just this. It's just this. And we minimize it. So rely on some community and get into support. Like focus on your self-care, on your well-being kind of moving forward. If you're in a relationship and you're like, I don't know, like, is this person toxic? Is this bad? Is this bad? Like, please reach out for help. And you go to rawmotivations.com, click on the one-on-ones. I work with people every single day to help try to provide them, to provide them clarity of like what's actually happening to help them understand the mind of a narcissist or what I'm seeing in the relationship of like, oh yeah, like this is probably what he's doing. This is probably what she's exemplifying. So if that's a question or if you have any questions about that clarity, trying to get closure, trying to break the trauma bond, please reach out. Go to rawmotivation.com, click on the one-on-ones. We'd love to be able to help you every single day to help you heal, grow, change, and develop.